Future scientists, my name is Miss Kaylee, and we're back again today with another Future Scientist story time. It's been a while since we caught up with our good friend Professor Clark, the Science Shark. So let's go ahead and jump into book number five, The Storm, and see what's going to happen. The deafening sounds of breaking waves could be heard for miles through the ocean's warm waters. One particular reef, located on the east coast of Florida, would soon be experiencing a hurricane. This area of the Atlantic Ocean was known as Hope Reef. It was famous for its sapphire blue and tranquil waters, with beautiful coral reefs and a vast array of marine life inhabitants. On this day, however, there was nothing calm and peaceful about these ocean waters. The sea creatures and animals that called Hope Reef their home looked upwards with concern and curiosity. Many of them swam and scurried around in confusion, while a few hid in fear amidst the rocks, caves, and crevices of the reef. The inhabitants knew this wasn't the usual sound and feel of waves over Hope Reef. All of the changes were due to the impending hurricane. The barometric pressure change and severe precipitation were clues that a tropical system was on its way. Out on the reef that day, swimming nervously, was Professor Clark the Science Shark, along with his sidekick Ray the Remora. The magnificent tiger shark was very preoccupied studying the weather conditions that seemed to be intensifying by the minute. The sea creatures that lived on Hope Reef depended on Professor Clark to keep them safe and prepared for anything, including bad weather. He would never let any of them down. Ray, from the pressure changes I'm feeling, I think we are going to be experiencing a full-blown hurricane by the end of the day. We need to get our neighbors together so we can prepare for this hurricane and keep our home safe, Professor Clark said urgently. Quick, let's try to find Holt and Rada so they can help us. Just as Professor Clark and Ray were ready to take off, Rada, a very concerned hawksbill sea turtle, swam quickly towards them. She was Hope Reef's newest inhabitant. Surprised to see her, Professor Clark and Ray didn't notice at first that she wasn't alone. Camouflaged perfectly with Rada's beautifully patterned tortoise shell was Holt, their very hesitant seahorse friend. Rada was out of breath, but she was still able to blurt out, Professor Clark, the waves are getting higher and higher, and I feel pressure changes in the water. I have seen these conditions before. Are we having a hurricane? Rada asked anxiously. Yes, Rada, Professor Clark answered. You are absolutely correct. I too felt the pressure dropping, which may signal that a hurricane is coming our way. Finally, Holt, the little seahorse, spoke bravely as he clung to Rada's neck. I'm going to try very hard not to be afraid. Holt, I can understand why you might feel that way, but later when I explain what a hurricane is and how they are formed, you will see how they actually benefit our ocean home. Right now though, you, Rada, and Ray need to gather all of our Hope Reef friends together. They all need to hear my plans to keep us safe, so please hurry. Tell everyone that you see to meet here at the Big Brain Coral, Professor Clark said adamantly. Immediately, Rada, Holt, and Ray took off, leaving Professor Clark behind to await their return with all the other inhabitants of Hope Reef. As the pounding waves continued to bellow overhead, Professor Clark devised a plan to keep everyone safe. Meanwhile, Rada, who normally was not a fast swimmer, was encouraged by a galloping Holt to swim faster and faster. They yelled at the top of their lungs and gills to every fish and sea creature they saw to meet at the big brain coral, where Professor Clark was anxiously waiting. Finally, when most of the reef residents were accounted for, Holt, Rada, and Ray swam quickly back to Professor Clark's location. Professor Clark was relieved to see his friends return and was encouraged to see so many of the reef's inhabitants following behind them. Professor Clark, you see, tried to live with a scientific purpose, investigate, observe, and analyze the situation. Although a shark, and a tiger shark at that, Professor Clark had been born different, with a purpose and mission to help educate the next generation. This gave him a unique opportunity. He quickly took control of the gathering, since there was no time to waste. Okay, everyone, listen up. As you have all heard before long, this part of the Atlantic Ocean will experience a hurricane. Soon we will have turbulent waves and water currents, so it's important for all of us to listen and prepare quickly. First, 
Most of us will need to swim down to deeper waters. Those of you that can't swim that deep, please find a secure cave or crevice in the coral around Hope Reef. I want all of you to quickly find food and eat what you can. Look out for one another and please be careful, Professor Clark stated assuredly. After the hurricane passes, I'm sure we will all have some cleaning up to do, he added. As the storm and ocean continued to roar overhead, the intensifying hurricane moved in closer to Hope Reef. Professor Clark signaled everyone to either start descending into deeper waters or they needed to find refuge in a secure cave or crevice. Professor Clark took the lead with Ray, Holt, Rada, and most of Hope Reef's inhabitants following him through the churning waters. Holt, clinging on to Professor Clark, yelled out in a newfound boldness, We! We're going to have a hurricane! Finally, Professor Clark found a safe spot surrounded by a deep cave and some large rocks. Now that they were safe, Professor Clark, Ray, Holt, and Rada could rest and wait for the storm to pass. Now that we are all together, Professor Clark began saying, let me explain what a hurricane is. Hurricanes are extraordinarily large storms that form over the ocean. When the ocean water is warm enough, warm water vapor rises and is then replaced by cooler air. The cooler air warms up and starts to evaporate. This water cycle can cause huge storms to form. These storm clouds can begin to rotate with the spin of the earth, which is called the Coriolis effect and an organized storm system forms. If there is enough warm water and moist air, the cycle can continue and the storm will get stronger and stronger. Now that I've told you what a hurricane is, let me explain how they are actually beneficial to our ocean homes. Hurricanes actually keep the oceans around the world from becoming too warm by churning the warm top layer of the ocean with the deeper, cooler waters. It is called upwelling. Hurricanes also enrich the reefs with oxygenated water, the wise professor finished saying. As the hours stretched by, the sounds of the crashing waves could still be heard even though they were in much deeper water. From time to time, Rada and several friendly dolphins made the arduous journey to the ocean surface so they could get much needed air. While Rada was there, she studied the weather conditions and also took notes to monitor the storm's progress. Each time Rada returned, she would share with Professor Clark what she was observing at the ocean's surface. The others, particularly Holt, sighed with relief when Rado returned. Rado's willingness to educate herself and the others impressed Professor Clark the science shark, and he rewarded her educational efforts with words of praise. Rada, you have done an amazing job in listening closely and taking notes for us. Thank you, Professor Clark voiced with approval. Rada blushed and added, I just love ocean research, and I hope that I can help you teach the next generation about hurricanes in our oceans. Professor Clark and Ray looked at each other, and with a gleam in his eye, Ray asked, Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm feeling a new name coming on for our newest friend. What do you think of Rada the Research Turtle? Ray exclaimed with exuberance. She's not only beautiful, but she's also very smart. Rada clapped her fins with excitement, while Professor Clark high-fived Ray to show his approval of Rada's new title. After what seemed like days, the sounds of the crashing waves became less deafening. Professor Clark knew that the worst of the storm was over, so he told everyone that it wouldn't be long before they could all go back to Hope Reef. Let's just hope that everyone fared as well as we did, he announced to the group. While they waited to go back, Professor Clark and Ray made their way around the area to see how everyone was doing. Aside from some shattered and frayed nerves, most of the sea creatures did fine. Professor Clark knew, however, that not everyone would have survived as they returned home. After a while, the group realized that it was time for them to return home and check on any damage caused by the storm. Everyone was unusually quiet as they made their way back to Hope Reef, as they expected the worst, but hoped for the best. As they swam, they passed many casualties of the storm that would soon become part of the ocean's food chain. Seed fans with exposed roots littered the ocean floor along with many species of coral polyps. Professor Clark hesitated when he saw the destruction as he respected the natural balance found in the food chain and knew not to interfere with that balance. Still, it made him very sad. Soon they reached their homes at Hope Reef, but the home that they left wasn't the home to which they returned. Everybody, including Professor Clark, stared in disbelief at what had become of their ocean home. Nearby on land, 
A young man named Andrew waited in concern for the safety of his fish friends and hoped their natural instincts would keep them safe. Andrew was the human who shared a special bond with Professor Clark and all of his ocean friends. Andrew had saved Rada when she had become ill. He had also cleaned up Hope Reef to help die his family and friends, realizing that it was the pollution on the reef that made Rada ill. Now, after a hurricane had struck the eastern Atlantic coast, he wanted to make sure his favorite reef and aquatic friends were safe after the storm. Andrew waited nervously for the local severe weather meteorologist to declare an all clear, which meant the storm had long passed and it was safe to go outside. Andrew knew he had to check on Professor Clark and Hope Reef as soon as possible. It was getting late in the afternoon, so he grabbed his scuba gear and a high-powered dive light just in case. He also knew he needed a dive buddy for safety, so he asked his father Scott to go. The two men jumped into Andrew's boat that was safely docked behind their house and survived the storm unharmed. What normally would have been a short boat ride down the Loxahatchee River Intracoastal Waterway to the ocean and Hope Reef became a much longer one. Andrew had to dodge several fallen trees and debris in the water left by the storm. They cruised past the usually beautiful beach, which once had been lined with palm trees, and they both noticed how it now looked bare and ghostly and desolate. Andrew looked at his dad with optimism and hoped that his cherished reef was okay. They continued their way to Hope Reef, located just two and a half miles off Jupiter's shoreline. Andrew steered the boat cautiously as debris was floating throughout the seas. The waves and winds had calmed down and were replaced by gently rolling swells. Andrew proceeded due east and New Hope Reef was just up ahead. There were still plenty of clouds around in the sky as evening started to roll in. The large cumulonimbus clouds made Hope Reef unusually dark. As soon as they arrived, however, Andrew and Scott saw something quite amazing and miraculous. Suddenly, as if on cue, the whole area in the ocean that surrounded Hope Reef lit up with amazing, glorious lights. It was as if someone had installed fluorescent lights, which Andrew knew was impossible. Suddenly, Andrew realized what it was. Dad, we are experiencing a bioluminescent effect. This is totally amazing. They had arrived at Hope Reef with gloom and despair, but the lights gave them hope. The lights gave them peace that no matter what had happened, all was going to be okay. Come on, Dad, let's dive in, Andrew said while putting on his gear. After both were suited up, they made their way into the brightly lit, watery world of Hope Reef. Andrew's dive light showed the two men the vast destruction the storm had wrecked on Hope Reef. Remnants of coral and other sea structures were scattered about, and the once abundant sea life was nowhere to be seen. The minutes seemed like hours as they searched for Professor Clark or Rada and their other friends. Little did they know that the gang had gone to the safety of deeper waters as Professor Clark had instructed. Suddenly, though, shadowy figures slowly emerged through the churned up ocean water. Andrew saw that it was his tiger shark friend, Professor Clark, with Ray, Holt, and Rada. Andrew was so relieved to see that they were all okay. Professor Clark was overwhelmed with emotions when he saw Andrew and his dad. Andrew realized what his shark friend was feeling by the expression on his face. Rada was by his side, along with Ray and Holt. Their heads hung low in sadness. Andrew knew he had to do something to cheer his aquatic friends up, so Andrew pointed to the lights all around them. He then motioned to them to follow him to the water's surface, as there was something he needed to say. At the surface, Andrew took off his scuba mask and quickly pointed to the beautiful bioluminescent lights around them. He smiled and said, I don't know if any of you will be able to understand this, but everything is going to be okay. The lights are a sign telling me so. Andrew reassured the shark and his friends. What Andrew didn't know was Professor Clark did understand, and he trusted Andrew's words just as he trusted Andrew. There was an unspoken understanding that Andrew would somehow restore their reef. Andrew made a very bold yet promising statement. We will rebuild and make a better, stronger, and healthier reef. You can all count on that. That was only the beginning of the story. A new reef would be built, one of many actually, in the beautiful Atlantic Ocean underwater paradise offshore of Jupiter, Florida. Very soon, many of Professor Clark's marine friends would call this new reef environment their wonderful home for life.
Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you had a splash catching up with Professor Clark, go ahead and give us a like. And if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you check back every Friday for more future scientist story times and virtual science videos on our Facebook page. If you are interested in checking out all of the other Professor Clark the Science Shark book readings, go ahead and click right here so you can watch all those videos in order. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.